Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Good morning dear student Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh First of all I am conveying my greetings and best wishes I hope that everyone is fine and healthy along with your daily life's activity and may you all be protected from all kind of problems and disease especially the present pandemic that has spread all over the world this is a, a series of a lecture of organizational behaviors today i am delivering my lecture number 10 about group behavior since we are talking about the organization behaviors and specifically we are talking about the behavior inside the organizations so what are uh, what is a group behavior how the group are formed in the organizations and uh, what are the different types of groups uh, what are the uh, group models and as well as the advantage and disadvantage of groups formation formation in the organizations since we are talking about organization behavior so it is very much important uh, that first of all we understand about group behaviors that how should it take place within organizations because uh, we are talking about the behavior of group in the organization or the behavior of employee at the workplace in the organizations so let me remind you once again since the lecture is online so there might be a lot of problems uh, you have uh, already faced or you might face in future or uh, still you're facing with a problem uh, let me share my whatsapp number uh, on the first slide if you faced with any facing with any sort of difficulty let me understand it's my pleasure to know and response to you as soon as possible so let us uh, before going to discuss about uh, group behaviors we itself what uh, defining then what group is uh, a group refers to the association of two or more persons interacting among themselves for the achievement of a common goals it is referring to the association getting together of more than the two or more than two persons while they're interacting with each other while they are talking with each other uh, for attainment of uh, an obtainment of obtaining of a common uh, goals and objectives so two or more individual while they are interacting and they are interdependent with each other and who have a common who have come together to achieve a particular objective a particular goal that has been assigned a particular goal that has been determined and specified in the organizations so these two or more than two individuals are interacting with each other for achievement of uh, the particular goal in the organizations so they are interdependent with each other this is called group or simply uh, you see the picture you can see more than one person it means that more than two persons there are five persons it they, they have formed a groups so these uh, they are, might be working in the organizations for uh, attainment of a particular uh, objective or, or goals that has been determined so two or more individuals uh, while they are interacting in their interdependent and who come together to achieve particular objective is called what a is called a is called group so things obtained by individual might be more complicated and task and might be more difficult task than the things that you are attaining by groups and the organizations so that is uh, we call the groups 
two or more than two person they are interacting with each other in the organizations they are interdependent with each other and mean that each one depends on each other uh, they do cooperate in uh, um, co cooperate with each other uh, there is a coordinated task among the individual in the organizations as a group so uh, gradually and intervally they are uh, building this relationship with each other that the the feelings uh, the sense of feeling that they are developing an organization is that that we are depending on each other and we have to work, do the works in a coordinated manners in a cooperative manner and finally to achieve the the, the, the target or the goals that has been determined in the organizations of so group behaviors what is a group behavior two or more people when they constitutes a group so what uh, characteristic they should have if they have some common purpose or goal uh, there exist a relatively stable structures it mean that a hierarchy or the years uh, this uh, formation of uh, this constitution of a group is called a group behaviors. It means that uh, the individual that they have come together uh, and interacting with each other for achieving a particular goals and they have a common purpose and a common goals. Uh, this thing that they are collectively achieving is called a group behaviors. Uh, so there exists, uh, there is a hierarchy, a relatively a stable hierarchy of uh, group structure in the organizations. It means that hierarchy means that uh, boss is there, manager is there, subordinates are there, employees are there. It means level of management or uh, the structure of the system of the organization is formed uh, based on the uh, authorities and based on the uh, duties and responsibility that have been given. It means each one is reporting to each one based on their uh, specific uh, duties and responsibilities. It means there is a definite structure in these organizations. Or we see that uh, this collection of people then see themselves as being a part of that group. So, so that is we are calling it is a group behaviors. Then what is team? If we are talking about groups, there is another relative and relevant words that is called team. So what is the team and what is group? Is there a difference between team and group? Uh, now we are going to uh, make it more clear that what are the difference between among these two, uh, two, two words. So team, a group of people with different skills and different tasks. Team is a group of people with different skills and different tasks. Who work together on a common projects. Who work together on a common service or a common goal with the meshing of functions and mutual support. It means in the team, the people who are have Get, uh, have gotten together with each other they might be having a different skills they might be performing different tasks in the organizations uh, and they are always working with each other together from a very close angles uh, on a common goal or a common project or a common uh, service they are providing in the society it means it's a common but in this common purpose common goals and common uh, project and service that they are providing to the people. Uh, each and individuals are working as a team there, but each and individual is having different tasks and different goals that mean their responsibility and duties are different, their skills are different. But finally, they are mutually supporting with each other and uh, doing their functions uh, cooperatively with each other just to achieve a common purpose and common goals. I mean that in the teamwork there is 
mutual support a common definition of a team is that it comprises of a group of people simply if you say and if you talk that what is a group uh, sorry what is a team its common definition is that it is a, a, a group of uh, people or the group is comprised of a group of people so that is called a team now there might be slight uh, difference as well among groups in the team in a group uh, work performance typically depends on the work of an individual while in a team it depends on both individual co contributions and collective efforts of the team members so in a group the work performance is just typically uh, it is depending on the work of individual in groups that they are working but in a team there is uh, both a uh, mutuals uh, there is individual contributions individually both contribute with each other in a team uh, and there is a collective efforts uh, i mean that social collective efforts are there as a team member they work together in achieve their targets in a group it is performance uh, it is individual performance and then leader is accountable in a group the individual for the individual performance the leader is accountable while in a team the entire team is accountable it is another very clear uh, difference between groups and uh, team so in in group uh, since there is individual performance for the action of the members of a group there might be a leader so the leader is accountable for the individual performance in a group of a, in a group in the organization while in a team if the work has been wrongly performed then the entire group is responsible so the entire team is responsible for what has been taken place or for what has uh, been done by the uh, members of the teams group members may share a common goal group members may share a common goal but team members is only sharing a common commitment to the purpose it means what the common commitment they have done they will share that with their groups so this is a very slight difference between group and team hope that uh, you got it well if uh, still it is not clear uh, then let me just understand let me know about it to answer your questions in regard to the uh, groups and team now uh, if we talks about the different uh, types of uh, groups then we are discussing about the formal and informal groups if we talk about the types so we have uh, uh, different types of groups that later on we will discuss about it that we are classifying the groups into different types but generally if we are talking we are having formal groups as well as informal groups so what is formal groups and uh, what is informal groups formal groups are those that is defined by organizational structure with designated work assignment and establishing establishing task or simply uh, we are defining that formal groups are deliberately created by the organization to achieve organization goals these formal groups are intentionally these are deliberately these are established these are made and created by itself the organization for the achievement of organization goals so in such organizational structure to individual are given a designated work they have been given a designated assignments uh, they have been given a established string task to individual that all work together in order to achieve the organization goals formal group is purposely designed to accomplish an organizational objective or task very simple definition what is formal group this is 
purposely these groups are designed for getting for obtaining for accomplishing an organization task or organization objective for example the six member making an airline flight crews or a formal group groups this is an example of formal groups uh, if you look up to the example of airline air airline so in the airline the pilots are there the captains and the crew members these captains and the crew member who are serving during the flight uh, the customers they make a groups this group is called formal groups in this formal group are been uh, designated just to achieve the organizational goal this is called formal groups while at the same time we are having another kind of groups which is called informal groups so what is informal groups are those groups which is neither formally structured nor organizationally determined these groups are natural formation in the work environment that appear in response to the need for social contact or we can define it as in another way informal group uh, informal group uh, develop informal group informal group develop uh, spontaneously among an organization members without any direction from the organizational authority it means that the authority has not been given from the top level management to form any specific type of a goal but uh, sorry any type, specific type of a group sir but this this type of group is not having any sort of formal structures and it is not organizationally determined types of a group but this is made in response to the need of uh, a time uh, here an uh, informal group will be informed uh, will be formed for a specific in particular task achievement for example uh, three employee from different departments who regularly eat their lunch together is an example of a informal group is an example of informal groups so these people so these uh, three imply that on regular basis from uh, different departments when they come together in a rest room or when they come together uh, in a dining rooms where they are eating the things they regularly meet with meet with each others um, and eat their lunch this is an informal group that has been formed by different three uh, employees from different departments so this type of group during eating the lunch or during having a breakfast is an informal group which is not formally or organizationally determined or it is not formally structured so such kind of uh, group that has been formed without the authority of the leaders or authority of the top level management of organizational authority but the group is formed is uh, called uh, informal groups now uh, we are classifying the groups that was a general classification that in the organization we are having formal and informal groups and we discuss about each a bit in details hope that you have got the points now we are uh, make it more uh, clear and make it more specific classifying the group into informal then in informal we have command groups we have a task group and uh, some other groups that subgroup that we are having in informal informals as well we are having informal groups which in which we have interest groups and we have uh, friendship groups so this is the further classification of groups uh, more specifically i have uh, given some other sort to make it more clear for you so there are uh, generally uh, we can talk about uh, 
not four types but we can say types of a group as a, as a, as a general we discussed that was a two now each one have its own sub uh, types of groups the first informal group that is called command group so what is command group uh, this command group is determined by the organization organization chart it is composed of individual who directly report to a given manager an elementary school principal and her 18 teachers from a command groups or the area cell manager along with his cell force is the example of command groups so what is command group uh, it is determined already by the organizational chart if you see if you enter any organizations if you see the organizational structure organizational sh structure of uh, that uh, if you want to know the organizational structure of that organization you refer to the organizational chart in the organizational chart uh, everything has been determined that who is the uh, leading the leader of the organizations who are the manager who are the chief executive or COO and many more uh, under whom are working then you can specifically make it uh, more understandable if you see the organizational chart of your organizations so in that we are having one types of a group that is called command group it means that individual who are directly reporting to their own given manager or to their own determined manager that has been uh, assigned uh, to them the job that they have to do and give the report to their own manager whoever the manager is but in the organizational hierarchy each uh, level of management uh, in their imply understand I am responsible to whom to whom I give the reports so this is a command group so what is command group is a group in which the individual is directly giving a report to the given manager it means under whom he is working so uh, as an example of uh, elementary school principal under the principal there is for example 18 teachers are working so one principal 18 teachers are working with one principal this is a command group so from the principal what comes it should be uh, it should be performed according to the uh, according to the uh, the statement that has been given by the principal of the schools uh, so the 18 other members the 18 other uh, members of the organizations that is uh, directly influenced by the top level management to, to the these 18 are responsible for the proof school principal to whom he is uh, the principal of school they will report to uh, the 18 teacher will give the report to them so such kind of group that is formed in organization is called command groups uh, or maybe another example for example the cell managers uh, who is selling the things in the markets uh, might be having uh, some other uh, forces which is called cell forces uh, under which they are selling their products I mean that so these cell forces are directly reporting their cell manager uh, this cell manager is then reporting their own their, their own line manager so this kind of uh, group which is formed uh, that to whom the other groups are responsible to be a given manager is called a command group sir. while uh, we are having uh, another kind of uh, group which is called standing committee it is a permanent committee uh, committee and organization to deal with some specific type of problem that may arise more or less on a regular uh, basis so in many organizations uh, if that is uh, whatever the sort of organizations are so these organizations are having some standing committee in this committee or the formation of uh, so many peoples in this committee maybe more than two three four five six seven eight and more than that people might be working in this committee so your organization might be having a standing committee so what is standing committee it is a permanent committee it's a permanent committee in the organizations and these permanent committee uh, is always dealing with some specific type of 
problems which is arising in the uh, organization maybe that is more or less uh, on regular basis that is called a standing committee and at the same time we have another kind of committee or which is called a task force or ad hoc committee so it is a temporary committee that is formed by organization member for any special purposes once the purpose is achieved this committee dissolves and this committee uh, is uh, will exist no longer more because these committees are uh, temporarily they are formed when the things are temporarily formed when the committee is temporarily formed it means that when the task uh, that has been given is achieved or the task is finished then committee also dissolved disbanded there will be no committee uh, but again in special cases if such things are happening in the organizations again this uh, task force and hoc committee will be formed and they will be working on that and finally to uh, resolve uh, the issue in the, the, the standing uh, the, the in, inside the, the ad hoc and talk for committee it will uh, be uh, also dissolved for example if we give the example of uh, the government is uh, making uh, this uh, during the pandemic times of corona virus that is spreading all over afghanistan so the government is making a committee is a task force committee of a corona virus or ad hoc committee for a temporary period once the pandemic is controlled and uh, uh, the things come to normal this committee will uh, automatically dissolve because the government is making a temporary committee just for a specific purpose so specific purpose may be for example the corona virus control uh, just to help the uh, publics and to help the people around the area uh, regarding the their safe as uh, health and safety so this uh, ad hoc and doctor uh, committee will work uh, from very close angle with the peoples and publics uh, just uh, the prevention of uh, uh, the people from uh, being infected by the corona virus once this corona virus uh, issue has been resolved and it's uh, almost uh, uh, vanished from the country Uh, so automatically this committee ad hoc or task force committee will also be vanished this kind of uh, uh, committee is known as ad hoc committee or task force or for example uh, an issue take place in organization for example in the university uh, a simple issue take place or any specific uh, problem take place in the organization so the organization makes uh, the university top level management makes or the uh, the the middle level management may, makes uh, a committee of a task force or the whole committee in giving them responsibility and duties uh, to perform the task their task uh, properly and finish the task on times when the issue is resolved so that automatically that committee will also resolve this kind of committee is called a uh, standing committee in the organizations uh, specifically task force or the whole committee Since we are talking about the uh, organizational behavior, so these understanding of these uh, things are very much important. That uh, if you are working in the committees, different committee, if you are working whether that is task force, whether that is standing committee, uh, whether that is uh, common common groups, so whether that is formal groups, informal, whatever that is, but we are looking forward. just to modify the behavior of our implied organizations and finally achieve the organizational effectiveness and organizational goals inside if uh, uh, we all do not work as a team in the organization as a group in the organization surely if we are uh, not behaving in the utmost uh, in a very right manner i'm sure that organization will organizational will effectiveness will not be seen so for that reason it is quite important that working as a team and a group or working as a group in the organizations it is very much important to understand each others behaviors in various condition in diversity of times so uh, task force is another type of behavior that we are having task force uh, ta- sorry task group uh, is one more types of the groups uh, people uh, simply we see what is a uh, what is task group people working together to accomplish a job task so all people are working together uh, just in order to get in a uh, to accomplish a job task that has been given to him that is for a task groups it means a task thing, a task is given to a specific group 
in that task uh, uh, to whom uh, to, to the group that is given the group is working on that to achieve the task and accomplish that goals that kind of group is called the task groups so it is also organizationally determined uh, represent those working together to complete a job task however a task group boundaries are not limited to its immediate hierarchical superior for example, for the, the, the hiring of a new employee can be a task which can involve general manager, HR managers, in particular functional managers. So to this uh, group, they are being given a task that you are recruit or staff some new employee in the organization. For that, they will make a group which is called a task group in which there will be general manager, HR manager, or some other type of manager will be there, three to four persons. And to them, uh, a task is given that you have to recruit some new employee in the organizations. Now, this kind of uh, group that has been formed uh, for accomplishing a job task is called uh, group, uh, task groups. So, what is an trust group? What is a an trust group? An trust groups is one more type of the general classification or the general classified types of a group, which is called an trust group. So, interest groups are such groups that affiliate to attain a specific objective of shared interest. The shared interest, attainment of a specific goals or attainment of a specific objective uh, in which all are having a shared interest. For example, employees who come together to have their vocation. Uh, schedules altered to support a colleague who has been fired or to seek improvement in working condition is an interest group. So interest group is a type of group that in which all the members are affiliated. They have been getting together with each other just for getting a specific objective that is a share. And mean the interest of individuals are there in that. For them all, for the for 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 a shared trust, uh, a group is formed. So that group is called interest group. So they all work together just to achieve a specific objectives or a specific goals. Uh, like for example, uh, as I give the example here, uh, the employees are uh, coming together in order to have their vacations uh, schedules. Uh, for example, they would like to have a vacation. So they get together as a, a group members in the class and they, uh, for example, if, if, uh, if uh, if you talk about uh, the organizations about the implies interest um, because a vacation is the interest of a share of every uh, person in the organization so everyone would like to have vacations while they are working a uh, tough task during their course of time of uh, official works so uh, at the same time the employee uh, needs uh, some vacation as well that they have to go just to psychologically relax themselves being away for some official works uh, from some official work for some times. So for them they are making a schedule that when we all will go for a vacations. So they are sharing their uh, ideas and they are coming to one unified uh, decisions uh, in which the interest of everyone is there is called an interest uh, groups uh, is called an interest groups. While uh, we are also having another kind of groups which is also coming in the informal types of groups that is friendship group. So people brought together because they share some common interest is called a, 
friendship group. So members have one or more common characteristic. Uh, for example, uh, they might be having similar age. They might be having uh, uh, similar age or holding some similar political views about some things uh, or about an issue. It means that as a friend they get together and uh, everyone is sharing, uh, having a common goals in it, they would like to, uh, having a common interest in it, they would like to have it. So they make these members of a group that they are, all, uh, all of them are similar in their age. Uh, it means that uh, in this part, if you talk about their age levels, it means that at the same level of age, they make a friendships. In that friendship uh, group is made is called a friendship groups. So always, for example, you might have seen kids are playing with kids, youngers are sitting with youngers, and olders are always uh, uh, with olders. So that uh, differences um, that has been made among the peoples that they form a group uh, in various situations variously uh, is called uh, uh, is called that specific type of group. So that is friendship groups. Now, why people join groups? Here is a question that why the people are joining the groups? Why the people are joining the groups? What is the importance of joining the groups? So what make people to join the groups? What are those uh, reasons that they people would like to join the groups. So each and every each and one we will discuss in details but here in this chart you can see as a whole that the people join the groups because of many reasons. Security is one, self esteem is another, power is another, status is another, affiliation is another reason and goal achievement is another reason. So for these different goals, uh, for these different objectives, for the different factors and reason, this is the reason that the uh, peoples want to join the groups. Uh, this is only uh, see some pictures. Uh, what you depend from these pictures? Uh, you think about it with yourself and answer this question with yourself. So, what each picture means to you? Now, to make it more clear about the previous slide that why people join groups, uh, let me just talk about each and one, each one's a little bit in details. For example, the first we discussed that is security. By joining a group, individual can reduce the insecurity of having to stand on their own. People feel stronger. They have fewer self-doubts and are most resistant to threats when they are part of a groups. So it means in a group, uh, living in a groups or joining a group means that there is self-security. There is a matter of security. It means that you will feel secure being among the groups. But if you are alone, surely being alone and if you compare being along with uh, 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 living a person alone with a person who is living in groups, uh, it means that there is a lot of difference between these two situations and these two persons. Those that they are working, uh, living and joining the groups, so they always feel secure about uh, their mm, and their self esteem and their whatever that but it is uh, that they feel secure about themselves because security matters for every individual uh, for that reason we have to live in family if I'm living in family it means that uh, there is social security uh, there is security of my life there is security of my property so I'm living uh, with a definite uh, structure and organization as well as I'm living uh, with a uh, with a uh, with a specific and uh, uh, specific uh, structure in the family matters. Uh, sorry, in family. Second is status. 
Inclusion in a group that is viewed as important by others provides recognition and status for its uh, members. Uh, if a person would like to have a status in society, then you have to join the groups. If you are away and just uh, getting uh, away from the societies and you are living in the place uh, where there is no community or you are living there alone, it means social contacts are not there. So how is it possible you will take the social status? So having a social status or getting social status in the society, it, uh, a man requires to live inside the societies. So the people are joining the group just to find out their status in society. And the third is self-esteem. Uh, groups can provide people with feelings of self-worth uh, that is in addition to convey, uh, conveying status to those uh, outside the group membership uh, can also give increased feelings of worth onto the group members themselves. Uh, living in a group is for a reason of self-esteem, uh, being away from such uh, situations you may not be able to uh, get a self-esteem. Affiliations is another reason that's why people are joining the groups. So group can fulfill social needs and uh, uh, people enjoy a regular interaction that comes with group memberships. For many people, these uh, on the job interactions are the, their primary source for fulfilling their needs of uh, affiliations. So if one uh, need to achieve their uh, individual uh, objectives or goals that has been determined uh, for himself or the, for herself, uh, so uh, they need to affiliate with some uh, peoples or with some uh, other strong uh, bonds of people that they are living under one roof and they are forming a common interest and common uh, goal. So I need to affiliate myself within. So affiliation with a group uh, can help us to fulfill my social needs as well as uh, that interaction that at regular uh, regular basis that comes among the peoples and a group memberships. Uh, so for many reasons, it mean it may be for example you have uh, been introduced to our groups. Uh, so uh, looking to your qualification, looking to your status in that group. So that group will uh, introduce you to the job or where job is available through that address you may be there. Uh, so these are the primary source for fulfilling the needs of the needs of social association. We need to associate and affiliate with the groups, uh, as well as power. What come what cannot be achieved individually often become possible through group actions. You search for infinity dollars or among last and sure or less, and among the group is a good salary. I will get a salary from the among last and okay will you sure or no, have a such a pain for a dish, a cursor, and a shake the lane of the upper group, a cursor, and can't live in among last or only in among a cachita, you know, dual room, it had a with a far polar room, mung yo quat show, no de yo quat, kidu panatija came on goal, shuffle, had of pass, and is a last or look at the munga, tito paragandao, in for a dish, a cursor, a pull, a derive for a donator, sir, a go, no shy, mung. The other Ahada which among the Pumzanta Bartakli Lasta and Ulu Shunu Padihatal Bandi, Bazi Sanan, Pa Group Nuki, Padaluki, Zekazan Zepazekevich, who we worry Padi group Kiusi, Trusuri, the group, La Adressa, the Ipuli Bukhtani, our Hara Sachidizanta, Pahadaf Kitakli Lasta already know. That's why we say, Pa, there is power in, mem in numbers. And why people join groups? There is another point that is a goal achievements. Like previously we talked about. Sometimes it takes more than one person to accomplish a particular task. So people pool talents and knowledge or power in such uh, instances the management will realize on the use of formal groups. For example, the organization is 
determining a specific strategic uh, objectives and goals for their organization that within five years or within uh, next five years, what achievement we should have to get. For that, all are making a formal groups inside the organization to each and individual is giving their duties and responsibility. So each and every individual is performing their activity in that formal groups just for the organizational effectiveness and for achievement of specific organizational goals. So that is why if you would like to advance and develop in the societies uh, and achieve our, our things and goals, uh, achievement take place very uh, normally, then we need to join the groups through. With the help of this group, we can attain our objectives. So this is uh, our today's lecture about the groups. Uh, inshallah, uh, by delivering the next lectures, that we will be discussing about the formation of groups, that how uh, the groups are formed. Uh, we will be discussing that, uh, inshallah, in our next lectures. Hope that you have. Uh, got the lectures and you have uh, done well so far if you have faced uh, during the lecture times with any sort of problems uh, let me know um, just to help you it's my pleasure to understand and answer your questions tell coming again with the next lectures Allah Hafiz Wish you all the best. Have a great times. Enjoy your life. Take care.